are setting out our plan to build that future fair for all. First, we must secure the recovery, not put it at risk. Second, we must support new industries and future jobs. Third, as we reduce the deficit and reduce it by half, we must protect and not cut frontline services. And fourth, we must stand up for the many, not the few. A future fair for all, Gordon Brown's prediction for another term of Labour. But as Prime Minister, he's more likely to be judged on the past rather than the future. After a decade in the shadow of Tony Blair, Brown was greeted by a baptism of fire. Britain under attack, then floods and foot and mouth, he dealt with it well. Election fever hit the corridors of Westminster. What better way to legitimise your appointment than a public vote? He bottled it. Brown signed away legislative powers to Europe without a referendum. Labour suffered its worst local election performance for 40 years. And then the credit crunch bit. Northern Rock the first to fall. Crunch turned to recession. Oil prices rocketed. House prices slumped. Repossessions increased. Unemployment reached 2 million. Quantitative easing was introduced by Brown. Print more money and hope it kick-starts the economy. He suffered a major revolt over plans to part privatise the Royal Mail. It led to strikes. The Damien McBride affair was damaging. Email smears against opponents. Not a good idea. An embarrassing U-turn over Gurkha's rights to residency. And then, of course, the expenses scandal. Slammed for introducing parliamentary reforms not in the House but on YouTube. Spelling a dead British soldier's name wrong in a condolence note and then not sending one for two years to another family, he was forced to apologise for both. He was then accused of being the office bully, something he vigorously denied. Finally, at the Iraq inquiry, he claimed the military was never denied funding for equipment under his chancellorship and that it rose year on year. Just weeks later, he had to apologise to Sir John Chilcott and the House for misleading them over that so-called fact. And this is why Brown's messages for the election need to lie in the future and not the past. Some of his key policies include giving a £140 tax cut to 22 million basic rate taxpayers, legally binding guarantees for all patients, including free personal care for the elderly who most need it making every secondary school a specialist trust or academy, ensuring that troops receive state-of-the-art medical care when they're injured, and protecting police numbers, making them spend at least 80% of their time on the beat. His wife Sarah has stood by him through thick and thin. Her media personality probably more positive than his, she could be an integral part to his campaign. Watch out for her Twitter page too. Brown the grafter, the fighter, he successfully fought off three coup attempts, the most recent of which left Jeff Hoon and Pat Hewitt red-faced and with no support. Recent strong performances in Prime Minister's questions has seen the polls gap shorten substantially. This confidence needs to be seen in the TV debates. His future now lies in the hands of the voter.